Hello brothers and sisters. I haven't uploaded anything in a while. I think it's been about six weeks now. Back in July, the Lord was telling me that it's time to go and that I was done with my job. Then at the end of that month, I had to go on medical leave from the store that I was working at because I had to have surgery and I began getting a lot of dreams from the Lord which I felt were about myself and I didn't feel the need to upload anything on my channel. The video that I uploaded from Paul Begley's channel, which was an interview that Paul did with Mark Biltz, was the last video I uploaded, and it received over 180,000 hits, and my subscribers grew to over 3,000, which was great. But in case you haven't heard me say it before, I don't care about the numbers. I just want as many people as possible to hear what the Lord is saying, and hopefully many will find hope, encouragement, and salvation through that. But right now, I'm here because I have a lot to say. I've had many dreams over the time that I've been absent from here, and I did think that those dreams were messages that were just for me, but I believe that some of them are for the body of Christ. And if not, you can still benefit from them. I will probably upload several videos because I want to talk about the dreams that I've been having, and I want to talk about the Revelation 12 sign, and I also want to talk about a theory many pastors and teachers have regarding Revelation 12 and a third of the stars falling from heaven. So there may be at least two videos, if not three. First, let's talk about the dreams that I've been having. Let's get to it. The first week of August, I had three dreams and a song in my spirit. In the first dream, my husband and I were at a store trying to pick up some things. A lady came in and bought up everything that the store had because she was trying to stock up. It was emphasized that she was buying batteries for lanterns, but she bought food too. My husband and I were also trying to buy batteries and lanterns, but because the woman had come to buy up everything in the store, there was nothing left for anyone else. Then I saw myself and my husband in this big house. We were sharing it with my husband's sister and her family. His sister and her family had the top half of the house, and my husband, myself, and our two children had the bottom half. In reality, I can't have children, so I know that this dream was not really about me. I believe that the first part of the dream in the store was about getting supplies before it's too late, before there's nothing left. And I believe the second part of the dream in the house my husband and I were sharing with his sister and their family is about families having to move in with each other and share living space. In my second dream, I saw myself at a store trying to buy groceries. When I got up to the counter to pay for them, the cashier called her manager and the manager asked if I was up there and she said, yep, she's here. Then there was a screen in front of me that they wanted me to sign. I told the cashier I didn't understand what they wanted me to sign for and that I wasn't going to sign for something I didn't want so they better not be trying to trick me. It seemed that they were looking up my credit history to see if I could afford to buy my groceries. I remember feeling very frustrated. I believe that this, this dream is about the New World Order and the Mark of the Beast system. In the dream, I don't remember handing any money to the cashier. It all seemed to be based on personal credit, but no credit cards were involved. Back in August, I uploaded a video regarding Agenda 2030 and how the UN wants to hasten the agenda of assigning everyone on the planet a global digital identification. They don't want to wait until 2030. They want to get this done as soon as possible. The digital identification is the RFID chip. It is the most versatile and it has already been created and is already being used for medical purposes and as a tracker. It will be used for banking, for buying and selling, and for general identification. Soon, there will be no more credit cards or cash. All it takes is a very globally tragic event to take place, and the powers that be will be declaring it mandatory for everyone to be microchipped. Rather than having to find and count all of the dead bodies, they will automatically know when each person's RFID chip has lost connection or the RFID chip will report that the person's heart has stopped and the person who has the embedded RFID chip will be automatically declared dead. 
This will also make it easier for the Social Security Administration and many other government agencies, since they will all be using the same database. I believe the event that triggers this will be the next event to take place. In my, in my third dream, I was standing with my husband in our living room, and he was trying to move some things out into the hallway outside of our apartment. Then all of a sudden, he dropped over dead. Then I was in this white bathroom where everything was super clean and I picked up this package of soap that belonged to my husband. I began to cry, thinking that he'll never use the soap now that he's gone. Then I walked out into the living room. There was a lot of people in my house. It seemed that my house had transformed because it looked nothing like my apartment that my husband and I had been living in. My living room seemed bigger and the furniture was arranged differently. Also, the kitchen was just off from the living room, and it had a window so that you could see the living room from the kitchen. The apartment that we had been living in, and still live in, in reality, was not laid out like this. There were people in my apartment eating and talking with one another. It seemed as if I was having an after-funeral dinner at my house. I went into my living room and sat down. My mom was there, and a man who had also just lost his wife was there. They were trying to console me, and I told them about the soap, and I began to cry again. Obviously, the message here is that my husband is spiritually dead, and the soap is symbolic of purification. Since my husband had never used the soap, and apparently was never going to use it, I forgot to mention that the soap was still wrapped up in its packaging. So this means that my husband has no intentions of ever being purified or cleansed of his sin. For the fact that I seem to be instantly in another house or apartment is symbolic of the rapture. Being caught up is so quickly that I didn't even notice, and suddenly there were all these people in my new home. My husband was not there, and it felt to me like an after-funeral gathering, and this means that my husband was left behind. I felt like everyone was feeling a sense of loss, as if everyone had lost someone. At first I thought it was just about me losing my husband, but it was apparent that everyone had lost someone. So in short, what I'm taking away from this is that when the rapture takes place, it will happen so quickly that we won't even notice it has happened. Each of us will have someone who has been left behind because they were not purified or clean and God sees them as being spiritually dead. We will take a moment to remember those that we have lost. Our memories won't be erased or modified so that we don't feel pain. Many people believe that that will happen, by the way. But our memories will be intact just like the souls under the altar in Revelation 6 at the opening of the fifth seal. They cry out and ask when their deaths will be avenged. If God has wiped their memory for the sake of not feeling pain or remorse, they would not remember that they had been slain by their persecutors. And we will also remember that we have loved ones who didn't make it to heaven with us. And let me just add that at the beginning of that dream, I saw my husband moving stuff out into the hallway. It was as if he was going to take the stuff somewhere, or perhaps he was just moving stuff around. But just last week, my husband and I moved stuff out of our storage that I've had for the last 15 years. And we moved our stuff over to my dad's because he has extra room right now. There are still a few things here at our apartment that my husband will be going to move over to my dad's just to unclutter our space. And the things he will be moving are the same things that he was moving in the dream. If you remember, in one of my last videos, I told you that the Lord confirmed to me that my dreams are now coming to pass. So if this dream where my husband was moving things out into the hallway, possibly preparing to take them to my dad's, is any indication, then I'd say that when my husband moves these things to my dad's, the rapture will occur or will be extremely close. One afternoon, the first week of August, I was getting ready to lay down for a nap with my husband and I heard a song playing in my spirit. The song was, Hold On, I'm Coming. I knew it was coming from the Lord. Then I saw that a sister in Christ had put up a video on YouTube and she entitled it, Hold On Bride, He's Coming. The video is the same song that I had heard in my spirit the day before. This was confirmation from the Lord. 
The three dreams and the song in my spirit all took place during the first week of August. Then during the third week of August, on the 16th, the Holy Spirit gave me a huge revelation and showed me that after 13 years, my dreams are beginning to come to pass. Then one night, when I went to bed, I prayed and I asked the Lord how much more time we had until we go home. Then I drifted off to sleep. As I was drifting off to sleep, I had this feeling in my spirit that someone was trying to dress me. Sometime right after that, I saw that a sister in Christ posted a video telling that she had a dream the same night that I felt as if someone was trying to dress me. And she said that the five wise virgins are being prepared. And someone posted a comment that they had a dream about being dressed in a blue gown. I felt that these were confirmations of what I had felt in my spirit that night about someone dressing me. Also that same night, as I was drifting off to sleep and feeling like someone was trying to dress me, I felt like the Lord w wanted to tell me something, but I never heard him say anything. Then at 5.15 a.m., I woke up and had to go to the bathroom. After I went back to bed, ten minutes later, I was already back to sleep and I was woken up by the sound of an alarm going off. I whipped my head up and looked at the clock and I saw that it said 5.26 and there was no alarm going off. The apartment was completely silent. When I put my head back down, it came to me that the alarm was going off in my spirit. The Lord was sending me a confirmation that it's time. On August 29th, as I was sleeping, I heard a voice say, two people are going out to the four corners to destroy the earth. Immediately I thought of Revelation 7:1. And as I am typing this, I'm thinking of Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un going to war. Then later, I saw a little red planet with a North Pole and a South Pole. Its North Pole was tilting toward the Northwest, and its South Pole was tilting toward the Southeast. I'm not sure why, but I believe that this little red planet was Earth. Of course, red does symbolize war, and it could also symbolize the blood that will be shed. On September 2nd, at around 1.40 a.m., I woke up from a dream. In the dream, I was given hundreds of millions of dollars. Then I saw myself and my husband in a store shopping. We couldn't believe we had all of this money. I'd put the money in my purse for safekeeping. I was told that I had to divide up the money so that everyone would get an equal share. There was a group of people that would share in this money. But a part of me wanted to keep it to myself. So I continued shopping, and then my husband and I went to the checkout line as we were shopping. The store seemed huge, but standing in line at the checkout, it seemed as small as a convenience store. There was only one checkout counter, just like a convenience store. At the entrance, there was a wall of windows with double doors, and I could see this car, which was right at the doors, and there were people in it who were creating a bomb. When I saw the bomb, right away I said, well, I know, where, I know what that is. They have a bomb. I'm getting out of here. No one moved from their place in line. I ran off toward the back of the store, and the further back that I got, it started to grow dark. I could see other people trying to hide from the explosion that we all knew was coming. Then I woke up. I understood that the Lord had given me a gift, which he has meant for me to share. It is valuable and should not be kept for myself or hidden. I'm a watchman, so I could see the dangers of the bomb when no one else could. I tried to warn the people standing in line, but no one seemed to hear me and no one moved. When I left the line to seek a place of refuge or safety, I left everything behind, including my purse. My husband never left the line. He stayed with the cart and all that was in it, and he stayed with my purse. He knew that what I had in it was valuable, but he would have never shared it with anyone. He would have kept it all for himself. As I went in search of, for safety, my surroundings grew dark. This is a sign of the earth growing dark just before the destruction. But those who have gone out seeking refuge or safety will be protected. Because the car with the bomb was at the door, the Lord is saying that destruction is at the door. A couple of weeks ago, I had a dream that I was in a hospital room, laying in a hospital bed. The TV was on, and all of a sudden, they must have released me to go home. Then I was in the waiting room, putting on my shoes, with a bag of clothes in my hand. As I was putting on my shoes, I looked toward the room that I had been in, and I could see the TV on. I was sure I had turned it off, but it was on again. 
I figured someone else must be in that room now. Then the dream was over. I believe that the Lord was showing me that my time here on earth is done. It's time to check out and let someone else take over. Though I was out of my room, I was in the waiting room preparing myself to leave. Being in the hospital and then being released also symbolizes that the sick are about to be well. Our bodies are about to be changed. Then last week, as I lay in bed, sleeping in the middle of the night, I woke for a moment and I heard the song, Here Comes the Bride. Some call it the wedding march. And last Monday, I had many dreams through the night and in one of them, I went back to work, but only for half an hour. And then my husband came to get me. I don't want that to alarm you. I don't want you to think that we're going to be here a lot longer than we want to be. I'm not sure what a half hour is on God's clock. It might be a few days or a few weeks. I don't think it will be months or years before we go home. I believe that all of the signs are being revealed to us. I don't think we're being lied to or played with. I believe that the Lord is genuinely telling us that we're in the season of his return and that very soon the first domino is going to fall. So don't let the idea of working for another half hour trip you up or cause you to feel discouraged. In fact, I know that a lot of you were hoping to be gone before September 23rd. And then you were hoping that September 23rd was going to be the day. And then you were hoping that September 30th, Yom Kippur, was going to be the day. And now that it is the 3rd of October and we're still here, you're discouraged and you're feeling like we're never going to leave. But the truth is, the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement are just parallels that God has given us to help us understand what is to take place, like pieces of a puzzle that show a bigger picture. And the fulfillment of Revelation 12 has not been completed yet. Revelation 12 is a sign that must come to fulfillment in parts. I will talk about that in my next video. The Revelation 12 sign and the solar eclipse that took place in August were just that, signs. They were signs that were meant to warn us and to warn the lost of the impending destruction that is to come. These signs were not meant to fulfill prophecy on the very day that they came. Mark Biltz, in his interview with Paul Begley, said that these signs were like road signs. He said that when you are traveling along on the road, you see a sign and it points you to something that is coming down the road. It's like a warning or a heads up so that you can prepare. And when you see a road sign, either it will take you to your chosen destination or it will help you to prepare to turn off and head in another direction. I believe that the total solar eclipse in August and the Revelation 12 sign in September were God's last warnings to the world that destruction is coming. And his hope is that people will decide to turn from their sin and reconcile themselves to him. Yes, some horribly destructive hurricanes resulted immediately after the solar eclipse but that too was a warning that much greater than that would take place in the tribulation God loves people and he doesn't want any to perish and spend eternity in hell he wants to give people every chance for repentance and salvation so don't be upset and discouraged that we haven't gone home because the moment we go home destruction begins falling upon the world yes the Lord is delayed but we were told in Matthew 25 that he would be. And also, I know you're going to hate hearing this, but he also told us that no one would know the day or the hour of his coming. Let me emphasize on no one. And he said that he would come on a day that everyone thinks not. So if we are preparing for him to come on a feast day or a Gentile holiday, that will not be the day he shows up. I have said this time and time again. Jesus is coming for his bride on a normal day when you are going about your daily errands, when you're taking the kids to school, when you're grocery shopping, when you're at work. He has shown me in every rapture dream I've ever had that he will come when it's just business as usual. When you're going about your normal routine and your mind is not even on the rapture, that's when you'll get snatched out. I don't want to hear that those scriptures were about the unsaved not knowing about his coming. I don't want to hear that because we are believers, we'll just know when the time has come. He said, no one. Do you think if we knew when it was going to be that we'd be laying in bed sleeping or standing at the hand mill? Do you think we'd be in the field? Do you think we'd be working? No. 
If we're expecting him to come on a certain day or a certain hour, we're going to be excited. We're going to quit work. We're not going to be able to sleep. For us, it's going to be Christmas, and we're going to be like little kids sitting up, waiting for Santa Claus. So just keep watching for the signs, and keep your heart ready. He is coming. Now I have just a couple more confirmations to talk about, so bear with me, and I'll wrap this up. Last week, my husband lay sleeping in the bed, and just before he woke up, he said he heard flowing water. When he told me that, I felt like the Lord might have been giving him a warning about the tsunami that will come upon the east coast of America. There are some people out there who know about the New Madrid earthquake prophecy, and they feel that when the surrounding states get flooded by the Mississippi River, it may cause flooding in southern Michigan as well. A tributary of the Mississippi River flows from Lake Michigan. We live in southern Michigan in a valley. So if this were to happen, the flooding would definitely affect us. This past Saturday night, early Sunday morning, I was in bed sleeping, and the sound of keys jingling woke me up. I looked up at the clock, and I saw that the clock was reading 4.12 a.m. I thought that my youngest cat was up playing with the keys, and I was bound and determined to ignore it and go back to sleep. But then my bladder decided I needed to go to the bathroom. So I got up out of bed and saw that my youngest cat was laying at the window sound asleep, as was the rest of my cats. So why did I hear keys jingling? Was it the Lord letting me know once more that it's time to go? Yesterday morning, Monday, October 2nd, 2017, while I was praying, I heard the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. Then when I was finished, my husband showed me a gift that a Middle Eastern man had given him. This gift was a set of bottles that had a cross with Jesus on it in the center of a box. In the bottles was holy water, earth, olive oil, and frankincense. These elements are for purification and anointing. The cross with Jesus on it is made of olive wood from an olive tree. These elements came from the Jordan River, from Jerusalem, and from Bethlehem. I believe this is the Lord's final way of telling my husband to get saved and baptized. Also, during prayer, I realized that all the signs that have been given to the body of Christ through dreams are pointing to October being the final month. Last year in October, Rhonda Emson heard the Lord say that we have one year left. Then she had a dream of a clock that had numbers 1 through 10 on it, and the 11 and 12 were torn away. I had a dream that I saw, a tri that I saw trick-or-treaters coming up the street. I saw them from a distance, and I knew that it was time to go. The 5th of October is Sukkot, or Tabernacles, and on the 11th, if I'm not mistaken, Jupiter completely transits out of Virgo. I don't know if those last two things have anything to do with anything, but now that we are past the 40 days of warning and of testing, anything is possible for America. The tensions between America and North Korea are not getting any better, and now even Venezuela is saying that they're ready for war with America. Then, Russia keeps warning us regarding Syria. So at any given moment, the United States could be plunged into war. The Lord did say that two men are going out to the four corners to destroy the earth, and I saw a red planet. To me, that is regarding war. War is coming, and I believe that everything is already changing. I can see it. I can feel it. We will be going home very soon, my brothers and sisters, so please just remain strong and faithful. We'll get through this, and the Lord will be with us, no matter how long we must remain. And just know that the reward for endurance will be so worth it when the time finally comes. I love you, brothers and sisters. Shalom, and God bless. Don't forget to check out my website, godswordevangelism.org. I've posted all of my YouTube videos, along with a few others that I've created over the years, and there is a message board there where God's children can communicate with one another. I invite you to come and share your dreams, your prayers, messages from the Holy Spirit, and just come to fellowship with one another. We're all getting ready to go spend eternity with one another, so let's get to know each other better and come together as the family we're supposed to be.